been a while since the chickens made a, uh, an appearance. The chicken? The chicken has never been on the art wall. Hi everybody, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And guess what year it is now? It's 2016! It's 2016. That's my happy dance, so I'm sitting down. To uh, listeners, Ryan is making a happy dance. It ah. looks like this. You might even be able to hear the chairs going on. <laughs> As a listener, I'm sure you found that extraordinarily illuminating. <laughs> but yeah, Happy New Year. Hopefully everybody had a, a safe and happy holiday season. And I can tell you we're going to bar because you put the word safe first. Yeah, uh, I always make sure people are safe. Um, well, again, okay, maybe not always, but um, within a fairly decent confidence interval, people are safe at the bar. Um, but yeah, hopefully you survived, and uh, uh, if memory serves correct, we intend on uploading this, like, basically the first day back to work after the holidays. You know it. So, hopefully uh, you are able to return to work uh, in one piece, and that you are not procrastinating too much from your job. But if you are, at least you're listening to the podcast, <laughs> because what better way to, to kick off a new work year with... Uh, 2016 Procrastination Tools podcasting oh there's a there's a there's a great podcast in that the <laughs> sequel to our our procrastination podcast <laughs> is our tools for procrastination podcast yeah what are the best ways to procrastinate if you have the internet or if you don't yeah uh, but today is not about procrastination today is about challenges yeah and um to a certain degree self-improvement i mean the the challenges we chose for ourselves this year do kind of help to really improve ourselves but I mean I imagine there are other challenges you could do and to improve the lives of others or the environment or totally. other things but no we chose to be selfish we're gonna try to improve ourselves I just when I look at my environment I'm the thing that requires the most improvement <laughs> I think you're too a little too hard on yourself Jim always <laughs> But no, so we we are going to undertake each a year long challenge, yeah. And we are going to stick to it, and we are going to check back in on it, and we are going to make weekly stuff about it in one way or another. Mm -hmm. uh, so we encourage you to also force us to stick to it and to heckle us if we don't. That's true. Um I mean, so my, my challenge is not fitness related this year, but I do find um, with working out over the last year and a bit that public sphere accountability really helps to, to keep you in line. So when you get other people involved on, you know, either cheering you on or I've ha I haven't had a lot of people calling me out when, when I'm absent from, from posting about going to the gym or whatever. I get so, a lot of affirmation, but... So if you follow Ryan's Twitter, um, which we'll, of course, put in the show notes, mm -hmm. you can uh, you can see his accountability tweets as he goes to the gym and leaves it with, with, through uh, If This Then That, right? Yeah, yeah, I have it set up and, automatically. Or if he drives past the gym. No, I... Uh, so I, I, if I have to drive past the gym, uh, and if there are any law enforcement agents watching this, please disregard this, but I will super quickly turn my phone into airplane mode, or onto airplane <laughs> mode, drive past the gym, and then either immediately put it back on, or I'll wait until I get to my destination before doing it. But if I if I realize that I'm going to be geographically close to the gym so that the geotag will, will, will trigger, uh, I will shut off my phone's ability to speak to the network so that it does not do that. Does so, your gym have Wi-Fi? Uh no, well, oh. I, I, it might, but the problem is, is I leave my phone in my locker. I mm -hmm. hope, so please don't steal my phone if you go to my locker. But um, <laughs> you know exactly where where Ryan's phone is. Please don't steal his phone. But yeah. I, I I will I will show you a cool trick when we're done the podcast. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a good person for uh, sorry. I'm not the kind of person who brings my phone up into the workout area for me. It's uh, I have a, an iPod and a pen and paper kind of deal. So I, no, no phone, no nothing, nothing to distract me. Ooh. So, um, so yeah, no, no, no. If if you follow along with my accountability tweets, they're they're automatically generated, and I think I've reduced all of the false positives out of it. It very rarely <laughs> now will will trigger when I'm not actually at the gym. But but yeah. So so I mean, you the external accountability is really cool. Yeah. And so we are going to undertake challenges. Ryan, you are not doing a fitness challenge. No. 
Now I am doing a fitness challenge. I mean, I'm still going to be doing the fitness stuff on my yes, own. Yes, but it's personally. not your official challenge. No, I want it to go something a little different. So your time. official challenge is going to be a drawing challenge. Right. Um, so if uh, anybody who knows me, um, I used to draw a lot as a kid. Now, granted, it was comic book related, and then at one point I got really heavily into Dragon Ball Z. So it was largely just pictures that were inspired heavily by Akira Toriyama's artwork style. Uh, and then once I got to university, um, I kept it a little bit in first year, and then I drew sporadically doodles and stuff in my notes and whatnot through university, but I've largely dropped making like artwork, visual artwork, um, with like just a few blips here and there where I happen to pull a sketchbook out of you know, off my shelf or something, and I'll doodle something in it. Um, but I haven't really made a concerted effort the way I did when I was a teenager. So, so we're going to talk more about the challenges, but first, our icebreaker. Yeah. First icebreaker of 2016. First everything of 2016, really. Yeah. I mean, when you get down to it. So what is your secret challenge? What is your hidden challenge? When you complete a year of your as-yet-to-be-specified drawing challenge, yep. um, what is the greater challenge that that will serve? Uh, so I think it's largely um, an offshoot or extension of why I wanted to make the podcast in the first place. Um, and that was um, I spend a lot of time consuming stuff, uh, not just food for obvious reasons, but I mean like um, digital content, for example. Mm-hmm. I spend a lot of time consuming that um, vlogs, podcasts, YouTube videos, uh, online content media critics and such um and i find that um it takes away from any kind of creative element that i have and so what i'm hoping to do in this challenge is to force myself much in the same way of forcing myself to go to the gym um force myself on a daily basis to create something even if it's small and I'll explain what I'm doing in a minute but even if it's just a really quick thing I want to make 366 and it's 366 this year because it's a leap year oh yeah uh, so we we have to factor that maybe maybe I'll do 365 and I'll have one cheat day uh, for an entire year but no cheat days no cheat okay so uh so at the end of the year hopefully I'll have 366 new things and so that's what I'm aiming towards is it is it is going to be something that produces um gets me to kind of creatively flex a muscle that I haven't done in a while Mm -hmm. Uh, and it'll give me something at the end of the year that I'll have something tangible uh, digital tangible you know it'll it'll be in both forms um, that I can look back on reflect on um, and it'll be something that I made so that's I think that's what this challenge is ultimately getting at if you the latent element of my challenges is uh, about that but what about you Jim uh, so mine is a fitness challenge, and part of that is I haven't been focusing on my fitness enough lately, and I find that that starts to drastically affect other parts of my life. Uh, we talked about it briefly in the in the in the exercise podcast about. Uh, some of the issues I have around body image and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. it's all it, it it's it's also that uh, it helps me establish my routine. Uh, it's one of those things where I will forget that I like stuff mm-hmm. a lot. It's a sort of an issue that I that I am working through, and when I forget that I like doing stuff, whether that's cooking or you know playing guitar, or editing videos, I stop doing it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't stop wanting to do it. I just stop doing it. And so having something where I have to do this thing that I like, which is exercise, which is a lot of fun, even though it is basically, I mean, human torture. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and having the extra sort of push for that. So ideally, my commitment to the podcast, which has been unfailing, um, will uh, will drive me forward and help me recommit to that and establish not just not just recommit to fitness but establish a better routine and become a more high functioning human being because mm-hmm. that is a thing I am definitely 
working on. And I am improving at it, but focusing on my fitness will help me do that. And it will it will help me feel more like I am putting myself in control. And that that is a thing that I need at the moment. So it is it is not just in the interests of being more fit, but in the interests of general self care. Mm-hmm. So what are the details of your challenge? What are you actually going to do? Yes. Yeah, Rubber so, hits the road. So um, since I've already mostly spilled the beans, it is a drawing challenge. Um, and actually, Jim, you were the one who suggested it. You had a really good uh, coining of, of the title of it. And it's basically going to be a doodle a day for 2016. So my goal is... Um, some sort of drawing sketch. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna invest a lot of time in doing um, high quality finished products. It's gonna be a little bit more. I mean, towards the end, I might, um, I might try to be a little bit more ambitious and do um, significantly like finished and uh, quality drawings. But for the most part, it's gonna be. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to start off simple with simple sketches, simple doodles. Um, so I mean. I'm not going to stick to a rigid seven day. Like we were, we when we were planning these out uh, at dinner, um, we were writing out some possible things like sketch Sunday or shading Saturday. Yeah. Um, I don't have the 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 notes in front of me, but we we came up with some really nice alliteration based um, themes. Alliteration is basically the best way to do anything. I find. Uh yeah, and. Like sometimes the, t- the most challenging part is the alliteration itself. You have an idea that you want to capture, but god damn it, you can't do it with you know W's and whatnot. But um, so I mean, I will. I'll probably tag them sometimes with those, but I don't think I'll I'll limit it to just seven themes that mm-hmm. I'll do over and over. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and I don't have a specific. Um, end goal that I want to get better at say life drawings or I want to get better at caricatures or I want to get better at um, uh, drawing objects or whatever I think it's just I'm going to try to set up a couple um, topics ahead of time so that I have something in mind when I go to sit down because one, anybody who's ever tried to draw that it's the same as writer's block you'll have a blank page which is on one level magical because you have an entire page that you can create on and then you have the pencil and then you have this entire responsibility of trying to to come up with something worth putting onto the page. Yep. And so I'll try to have some topics, themes picked out. Maybe I'll put them in a jar or something and pull it out and then and Ooh, it, pick it out fun. that way. Um, so I will do a doodle a day. Uh, pencil, pen, I have pencil crayons and such, so I might try to do different things like that. Um, and the way I will track it, and so I have a, a notebook or a, a sketchbook that I'll be doing it in, and then I've set up a Tumblr page where I will either take photos or I'll scan them. I'll probably take photos because it, I don't have a scanner at home, uh, so I'll take photos and upload them that way, and then when we come together for our check-ins, um, I maybe I'll scan higher quality images and then we can we can intersperse them in the the um, page or I'll upload them to Instagram or something yep, like that. So we can do that. We, I haven't quite worked out that level of of execution, but um, so those are my plans, and I will will put a, a link in the show notes to the the Tumblr because off the top of my head I don't know what the URL is. I only <laughs> I set it up like two weeks ago and I haven't looked at it <laughs> since. Well, I mean, by the time you're listening to this, yeah. it, Ryan will have looked at it at least three times. No, no, it's true. It's true. Um, but as of filming, I set up the Tumblr page, um, which in and of itself was kind of weird because it was ridiculously simple, and then I had no idea how to navigate the dashboard <laughs> to get to my page. I saw the suggested pages going down the thing, but I, I didn't know how to navigate to my individual page. At some point, I will teach Ryan how to use Tumblr. <laughs> I just always thought it was for high school kids, and, you know, and people who people who like Harry Potter. Yeah, people like Harry Potter and fandoms and reblogging and stuff. That's why it's for you. Yeah, so... Tumblr so, is for everybody. So uh, you will be able to track it on Tumblr. Um, I will probably put some of it up on my personal Instagram. Um, I imagine we'll, f- we'll maybe put some of the better ones, maybe the best of the week up on the website. Yeah, totally. Other things. We'll, we'll figure it out, but um, that's what it is. So the, the biggest system thing that I have to do is I have to carve out 
anywhere between 10 and 30 minutes because again I don't want these to be super labor intensive to start I just want them to be fast and loose so that I can get something on page you know it's it's the embodiment of perfect is the enemy of done kind of deal yeah. right it doesn't have to be good it just has to be good enough for me to get something down uh, so I'll carve out 10 to 30 minutes a day take a photo upload it and it'll be there um, and then do that for 366 days 366 yeah. so that's what I'm doing I do not have a daily challenge I uh, opted out of the daily challenge. Also, do like I while I would like to do some fitness related stuff every day, you know whether that's dancing or swimming or whatever. I don't want that. I don't want it to be that intensive. Uh, instead, uh, I wanted to set some goals, and the goals that you had suggested, while noble, mm-hmm. were very, very fitness broy of deadlifting. Uh, squatting, and I forget what the last bench pressing. Well, I mean, to be fair, and I, I mentioned this a little bit in the pre-show, is right now I am just barely transitioning from beginner to intermediate. I don't object to any of those yeah. goals, uh, but they are not for me. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I think I, w- I was talking to Drew, uh, mm-hmm. who we did the Weird Chops podcast mm-hmm. with. And about because he he just hit a bunch of major fitness milestones, um, and he's now like he's now f- fully running around on his stilt rig. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can see pictures on his Facebook page, which I'll put in the show notes because they're amazing. Mm-hmm. But uh, and he said he said yeah I don't really care about what I bench press. I need to be able to lift my youngest child. Mm-hmm. That's it. And I thought oh that's clever. Mm-hmm. So what I am going to do is. Attempt to plank for as long as possible. And by the end of the year, I am going to do a freestanding handstand. Um, Or at the very least, I am going to fail hilariously and spectacularly (laughs) at doing a freestanding handstand. So we'll see how that bit goes. But I mean, the planking will help with that mm-hmm. because it'll it'll build up my strength, and that was sort of the idea. But just being being able to plank longer means having stronger sort of arms and core, and it is generally good for me. So that is my goal. Uh, I will track it in something vastly less interesting than a tumbler, uh, but in a spreadsheet, which will translate to some graphs that you can see on the page, which is at conceptcrucible.com. So until I find a more interesting and funny way of tracking it, that's where that's going to go. I still say we should do some sort of, I mean, it's just going to be a fairly static shot of you, but put uh, a whole bunch of f- um, different times of you doing it cut together with the Benny Hill theme. Or oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, sorry, so there's also going to be planking videos this. and workout vlogs and stuff like that. But the actual, cha- th- those are those are bonus fun. Oh, okay. Um, the actual terms of the challenge and, and the times will be tracked uh, in the in the graphs so that I can go and see them and so I can see sort of where they're at. And one, one of the things that's going to mean is also privately I am going to do things like track food consumption and things like that because um, if I'm in better control of my um, sort of dietary requirements and things like that, then I will be in a better position to do things like a handstand Mm. so yeah fat guy handstand coming in 2017 that's that's what's gonna happen 100 percent gonna get there probably (laughs) so we've got these challenges yeah and we have spelled out what they're gonna be yeah um but everybody makes resolutions on new year's actually we did a podcast in 2015 last year about resolutions Mm -hmm. so we are among those people Mm -hmm. who make resolutions in new years and almost nobody keeps their resolutions yeah i mean resolution the the resolutions are made to be broken yeah an entire fitness industry is predicated on on that yeah and anybody who goes to the gym hates the first two to three weeks after those milestones like new year's and then september and (laughs) <laughs> There's a couple in the middle there where suddenly all these people are there that you've never seen before taking up your equipment. <laughs> and I hate to say that out loud, but it's true. 
and it really slows things down a little bit. <laughs> and like, I just I always fight with that, you know, like the idea of mentally I'm shaming somebody in my head. Like I saw this guy. Just I have to tell the story because like, it's it's nothing to do with the guy per se. But I found it really weird that he was curling a 20-pound bar while wearing a weightlifting be- belt. I don't know what weightlifting belts are for. So. They largely help to support your core when you're lifting really heavy weight. Okay. And so, like, this was a guy... I mean, like, he was thin but not muscular. So, like, he was working out probably to bulk up. And, you know, I always say he was a kid. Like, he was... Significantly smaller than me, and I, I guess most assumed, human beings. Yeah, but I also assumed he was younger than me. But I found it really weird that the the bar that he was curling was probably no more than twenty pounds, and he was wearing a, a, a lifter belt. So like, it's it's anything that helps to keep your spine straight, so like you don't curve. Mm-hmm. So like you use it for deadlifting. You can use it also to to suck everything in for support when you're doing things like bench presses and, and squats and stuff. But sure. I didn't see the need, or I didn't I didn't understand the need. To have to wear this when you're only curling... Build good form? Maybe, but I, I think you should build good form before you get to that point. So I don't know anything about weightlifting. I don't know a lot so. about weightlifting either. It was just, it was the weirdest thing to see at the gym. So, like, it, it, I mean, you know what? The, the fact that he was there was good enough. Like, it, it was just kind of goofy to see, like, you know... Speaking of you, let me tell you, let me let me tell you about goofy things at the gym, Ryan. In the next year, you're going to see a whole bunch of them, because nobody looks goofier at the gym than me. But uh, I will, of course, be working out in the privacy of my own, um, like, vault. Like, the most private <laughs> that I can get. I took a tour of it. It's pretty, it's pretty private. No it's windows. Pretty, it's pretty vaulty. Yeah, there's... Yeah, so... Why? What makes these different? What makes challenges different from resolutions? Um, I think part of it has to do with uh, both of these leverage our commitment to the podcast. Yeah, here's this thing that we already do, and part of it, a lot of it, sort of addresses that notion that we are going to make stuff out of it, and we want to make stuff out of it, and that is the fun part of it. Mm-hmm. As much as I am not looking forward to a three minute plank. Mm-hmm. I am looking forward to attempting to explain Descartes while videotaping a three-minute plank. Yeah, that should be that should be the, your spinoff podcast. I'm going to die. The history of philosophy, one plank at a time. <laughs> the history of philosophy in planks, because like you can and you can have your your uh, your logo look like a bunch of like pirate deck planks or whatever. Oh, well, or we can just get you there with like a like an iPad, like a teleprompter, and I can just read philosophy texts or 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 famous texts. Yeah. While uh, while planking, that yeah. seems like that seems like a good time. There, there's so many ways to do this. I, I am going to kill myself doing it, <laughs> but I will enjoy it. I think one of the other things that uh, I just thought of this now: the difference between um, what we're doing and a resolution. Resolutions tend to be behavior driven and changing yourself. What we're doing as a challenge just seems more like for the sake of like doing it to say that I've done it. Like I don't necessarily think I mean you're probably going to continue doing planks if you continue to work out because it's just part of a a workout thing but it'd be no different for me like me thinking like I'm you could say like I resolved to climb a mountain but large parts like I challenged myself to climb this mountain because once I'm on the other side of it you know it's something that I did right yeah I think there's something there that's the difference like I'm not trying to resolve to be a better artist. I'm just challenging myself to produce content every day in the form of artwork. Mm-hmm. And and so I, that might be the other the other difference too is it, this is behavior driven as an outcome, but the outcome is largely just something to do so that we can check it off the list. But I guess there's I don't know how's that different than like stopping smoking. Or well, I think I think part of it is that is is that the challenge ends in 2017. I suppose that's true. It's, so it's you you though. will you you will not presumably unless you enjoy it immensely you yeah. will not continue drawing every day. Yeah. After 2017. No, that's fair. I will like it likely because I will continue working out. I will continue um, having plank times and presumably doing handstands. Mm-hmm. But I won't be posting them or necessarily doing. Uh, a lot of content based around that, and so I think there are definitely differences. Yeah, and I think the big one is that challenges end. There's a there's a sense of finality. It's not 
a resolution is often a thing that you're going to have to do for the rest of your life, whereas you can count down the days on your calendar mm-hmm. for how many drawings you have left to do. Yes, yeah, it's, a, it's a predefined end. Resolutions end as well, but usually it's yes. not something that you consciously decide. You're like, I'm, I'm going to stop smoking for a year. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I guess I guess those are some of the things, some of the elements that that separate this out. You know, it's uh, it's got a predetermined end. It's intentionally trying to achieve something, mm-hmm. and in this case, we're leveraging something beyond ourselves. In this case, leveraging the podcast yes. to keep each other accountable and to to make the podcast more interesting with new content. <laughs> <laughs> or at least that's the plan. I mean. I'm already sort of going, what? what's the 2017 challenge going to be? But at the same time, I feel like maybe we need to get through this one first. Yeah, or at least the first six months. Yeah, we'll yeah. do a check-in podcast, and you can uh, find our content in the show notes. Yeah. But uh, with that in mind, um, what does failure look like? I mean, I mean, with a challenge that has specific endings and specific victory conditions... One of the other things that's worthwhile to establish is failure conditions. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I can I can go first on this one. Okay. Um, I fail if I quit. Mm-hmm. Um, not miss a day. Miss a day is a thing that happens. You know, life 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 has a way of interfering with that kind of stuff. But. Uh, I remember so the last challenge that we both did was NaNoWriMo, and we <laughs> both failed. <laughs> I got about 9,000 words in, and then Desert Bus hit, and I just sort of quit. Yeah, I, and I don't feel terrible about that. I had a lot of other stuff going on that month. But I understand what what it feels like when I quit, and I, I know the difference between stopping or like failing, like missing a day, and quitting. Mm-hmm. Quitting often involves words like taking a break, or you know, because I mean the thing is, is that if you with exercises, if you want to take it easy, you can, but taking it easy is not the same thing as not exercising. It mm-hmm. just means not sort of pushing yourself as hard as you were. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't mean necessarily skipping workouts or skipping sessions. It just means pacing yourself and understanding where your limits currently are. And that is a thing that that I that I am attempting to be mindful of rather than going, "Oh no, I'll just I'll make it up tomorrow." <laughs> which is bad. Um and again, I will I will I will recognize when I have quit and that will be a bad feeling. But then I will have to start again. <laughs> Because I got to get this thing done, mm. but I will still I will still recognize it as a failure. Yeah. I mean, if you if you come back to me in May and are, and are like Jim, uh, I haven't been looking at your spreadsheet and uh, uh, I haven't seen any updates for the past three weeks. I'll be like, fuck. <laughs> but that's that's failure for me. Like failure for me is is distinctly. Um, like when I give my, myself permission to cheat mm-hmm. uh, in that kind of way. Uh, how about you? Um, so broadly speaking, I will fail if I do not have 366 drawings at the end. Mm. Um, specifically, and this is something that maybe we can negotiate and determine a little bit afterwards if we want to get a little bit of audience participation in, is whether or not I fail if I don't post actively every day so uh because i know that i'm human and it's really difficult for present ryan to know everything that's going to be going on with future ryan future ryan's got stuff to do yeah so whether or not i will be given the permission to say uh either draw stuff ahead of time so it's okay the spirit of it is i post every day the execution of it might look a little different it might be that I, i have to draw a couple Days yeah, the, the execution of it is is uh, 366 drawings. Yeah. Full stop. Yeah, so whether or not I'm allowed to... I can't believe to, we picked a leap year for this. Yeah, it just it was a- accidental. <laughs> um, Couldn't have done this last year. Yeah, um, so yeah, I, I mean, I can, I can 
potentially fail if if I decide or if we decide that I have to stick to the spirit of posting once a day. But there's also the I could foresee cases where I would not be able to post. Things that will happen after this show, Jim will teach Ryan how to schedule Tumblr posts. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking more like uh, it just get, like, I, I'm not ahead of the game, and I go one or two days. So, like, yeah. I, I suppose we could say so you'll make up drawings. Yeah, I might have to post like two or three. I think maybe we should put a limit on there. Like, I can't miss more than say th- like I can't go three days without a post. Otherwise, that's considered a fail. Now, the other thing is, is I if I fail, I should still continue to do the challenge. Yeah, like, I shouldn't like stop. Fail- failure is not a stopping point. Failure yeah. is an opportunity to start again. Yeah, but I just might have to admit that I did not get the original, like, gold. Yeah. The gold the gold level of, you know, 366, I might hit the bronze level kind of deal. Yeah. So, uh, so that's that's what I think failure would be, is if I do not have 366 drawings. Um, nice. I so. like it. Uh, but, I mean... Again, like, and it's the same with working out and stuff. Is uh, you have setting up a system to in order to to help yourself succeed. You can't just rely on I will always have the will and motivation to get up and do it. So, like, get up and go work out, or get up and and draw. Mm-hmm. And so, um, it'll be a lot easier to fail if we don't say carve out a particular time or learn to negotiate on the fly of I can't do this today I have to do it tomorrow but I have to do it tomorrow so like for you working out would be that way it's like today I do not have time to work out no matter how I carve out my day I do not have the one hour it takes to to work out so I have to go tomorrow non-negotiable or something like that so or in my case you know like if I I don't go to sleep until I draw something you know that that's Without having the systems in place is really the, that's where you set yourself up for failure. Doing it on motivation alone. <laughs> yeah, you oh, know, man. What, what, how, well, I wish I would have uh, written down the the quote of uh, like inspiration finds you when you're when you're practicing. Isn't it Picasso said something like that? Like, good luck finds you, or fortune favor finds you when you're. I have no idea. You. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it'll, I'll find it'll it. be in the show notes. But yeah, it's, as with all things that we can't remember during the show. No, well, but anyways, the, the gist of it is is that um, inspiration, or whatever, will find you as you're grinding out the hard work. Yep. You know, so, so you can follow these challenges. Um, there will be links on conceptcrucible.com. Yep. Um, there will also be links in the show notes. Yep. Which are down below if you are. Uh, Either or, actually, unless you were listening on iTunes, in which case you will have to go to conceptcrucible.com to see them. And you can post in the comments with your challenges if you are also undertaking a thing, because we would like to follow your thing. Yeah, we love following whenever people... We're thing follow nerds. We are, we are. So if you are doing something, let us know so that we can cheer you on, uh, and also maybe brag about all the cool things that you're doing. So, But, yes... Uh, and this, then, to get more updates of the podcast, you can subscribe on iTunes using the link in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find them at conceptcrucible.com or the video versions at youtube.com slash wootsuit riot. Mm-hmm. But apart from that, we'll see you later. Oh. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Stay awesome, and let's get on those challenges. The chicken has never been on the air wall. I know, but it was supposed to have been an inside joke at one point. Was it? Yeah, we were talking originally about putting the rubber chicken in as as an inside joke. We've been podcasting for that long that we forget our inside jokes. It's never been in a a video, though. But it was discussed as part of it.